Hi, my name is Nelson Hernandez, and many of you will remember the interview I conducted with Bozik Rylik, author of the Ribka Chess Program about 18 months ago. If you're watching this interview, it is very likely that you've heard about the controversy surrounding Rylik and his program in recent days. Well, in a few moments, Voz will answer some of the questions we all have. Briefly, here's what's happened. The International Computer Games Association, or ICGA, headed by Dr. David Levy, and really the closest thing computer chess has to a governing body, received a complaint alleging code had been improperly used from chess programs Crafty and Fruit in early versions of Ribka. The ICGA conducted what they characterized as a rigorous investigation and unearthed evidence that they say conclusively proves that Rylik violated Rule 2 of their annual World Computer Chess Championship Tournament. The rule stipulates that every entrant to the competition must be an original design. So there's clarity in this. Let me read you the rule, word for word. Each program must be the original work of the entering developers. Programming teams whose code is derived from or including game playing code written by others must name all other authors or the source of such code in their submission details. Programs which are discovered to be close derivatives of others, for example, by playing nearly all moves the same, may be declared invalid by the tournament director after seeking expert advice. For, the, for this purpose, a listing of all game-related code running on the system must be available on demand to the tournament director. The ICGA imposed three sanctions on Rylik. First, they stripped the four World Championship titles he won from 2007 through 2010, as well as his tie for second in 2006, in effect disqualifying all Ribka entries that ever participated in their World Championship tournaments. Second, they demanded the return of all trophies and prize money that Rylik won from their tournaments. Third, they have banned Rylik and Ribka for life for com from competing in ICGA sponsored events. In addition, there are also allegations that his use of other programs constitutes a violation of the General Public License, or GPL, of those programs, and as such, the matter has been referred to the Free Software Foundation, a U.S. nonprofit organization that litigates against software violators. Needless to say, this is the biggest news to hit computer chess in over a decade. The press loves a good scandal. As you can see from some of these articles, it's been pretty brutal out there. This one here is my favorite. British tabloids are the best, aren't they? Until now, Rylick has been silent on these developments. Today, uh, Independence Day, here in the U.S., he will speak his piece. Let's turn to him now, speaking to us by video conference from his home in Warsaw, Poland. Hi, Vaz. Hi, Nelson. Nice to see you again, and uh, thanks for taking an interest in this topic and for taking the time to do this interview. Uh, before we start, I'd like to make a short statement about these ICGA allegations. First, I did not wrongly omit anything from our entry form, nor did I break any other tournament rules. did not list fruit on the entry form because there is no direct game-playing fruit code in Ripka. Uh, Ripka uses a different uh, board representation than Fruit and uses a different structure of search routines, so this should be quite clear. Uh, now, it's true that I did take a number of things from Fruit which are above the level of source code. This is something that I've discussed many times. 
something which is perfectly normal practice and it's not something which is asked about on the entry form. Second, Ripka 1 was already disassembled and published back in 2006 and everything about Ripka 1 has been completely transparent for four and a half years or so. Uh, so if somebody, if one of our competitors or if the ICGA had a problem with something in Ripka 1 or with the information that I provided on our entry form, then uh, that was the time to raise it, uh, you know, before the tournament. Uh, once our tournament entry is approved, there's no uh, grounds at all for reversing course and applying some kind of retroactive penalties. Third, if the ICGA wants to open this Pandora's box of what exactly is an acceptable level of engine similarity, why is Ripka being singled out? Why is Ripka being the only engine which is investigated? Uh, so there are a number of quantitative ways to measure engine similarity. For example, there are ponder hit rates and uh, Ripka similarity to fruit in terms of ponder hit rate is approximately average. There's also ELO. ELO is another objective uh, measurement. Uh, you know, typically the top engines, top five, six engines are within maybe 50 ELO of each other and Ripka was, you know, 150 ELO stronger than Fruit 2.1 and 100 ELO stronger than the top engine when she was released in December of 2005 and later that gap grew to 200 ELO. So again, uh, this simply suggests a, an above average level of originality. S at any rate, uh, there's simply no reason for Ripka to be singled out like this. Uh, if the ICGA wants to go down this path, they need to set, establish some kind of quantitative measures for what is and is not acceptable and then they need to apply those measures to every single participant. Fourth, I completely disagree with the way this entire business was conducted. There was all kinds of public statements and accusations. The ICGA made an accusation uh, and uh, by the time I was asked to address the accusers and discuss the topic with them, which is again not at all a proper protocol, but by this point they had themselves made multiple public statements. So it was pretty obvious to me that this was not going to be some sort of a fair hearing and so I did not participate. Would you say that that in your current edition of, I mean this is not the allegations that they've made, but I just want to kind of backtrack, okay? In Ribka 4, would you say that in the search evaluation or any of the other auxiliary functions, there is any direct copying of fruit code anywhere in there. Yeah, I'm afraid this is going to depend on the definition of auxiliary function. Okay, well explain please. Well, Ripka has uh, numerous, uh, numerous code from other programs from, you know, from the public domain inside, you know, in the, I use uh, I use that uh, throughout the code. That's kind of accepted practice, and uh, that's um, you know that's legal and that's that's do that's that's code that's in the public domain. So uh, that's I'm not sure what you want me to explain. Actually, sorry to. Um... You say there's code in the public domain. You're t you're saying essentially that you did use functions, not fruit code not crafty code, but public domain functions and, they, and they're and they perfectly legal to use. Is that correct? Oh, sure. I, I mean, there's probably several dozen uh, such things, yes. But absolutely no fruit or crafty in your current version of Ripka. Well, certain uh, public domain functions may well be in fruit and crafty as well, and uh, so uh, they may be shared between crafty, fruit, and Ripka. Not really sure. And it's even entirely possible that I would have taken them from Crafty and Fruit and put them into Ripka. For example, uh, the table base code, the Nalimov table base code, that I remember quite specifically taking from Crafty. So, and that's normal. All right. So what you're telling me then is, I under, as I interpret what you just said, uh, you have taken public domain code, which is perfectly legal. And there may be code in those engines that is the same as yours, but that's only because the code is public domain. It's not like you took their original code and put it into your 
from in your into your version of Ribka. Is that correct? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good summary, I guess. It, is all of this true also for Ribka three? Yes. Is it all true for Ribka two and all the uh, subsequent versions of Ribka two that you put out? Yes. Is this true for Ribka one? Yes. So Vaz, have you read the ICGA panel's conclusions regarding uh, code that they f they feel is copied from craftier fruit? I'm familiar with it. Uh, I haven't read it in detail, and I don't I haven't prepared some kind of a point by point rebuttal. But I am familiar with it. Yes. Well, in fairness to you, obviously this is the wrong forum for a point by point rebuttal of everything that they have found. I mean, if they have if they've made fifty points. You're not going to sit here and exhaustively refute them. Uh, so I understand that. But my question to you is, if you've read it at all, is there any comment that you would like to make regarding their findings in general? Not really. I mean, no. <laughs> not really. <laughs> I actually don't even specifically remember any points. I mean, no, this is not... Uh, no, I don't, have nothing, I don't have anything to say about that. Can you foresee a time that you would ever address their points? Yeah, I haven't really thought about that. I mean, I suppose that if there is some kind of, um, let's say, legitimate governing body that can control something that I want, then I could cooperate with that. Uh, that's entirely possible. Kind of hard to imagine in practice, but I mean, in theory, that's... That's quite possible, yes. So, so what I infer from what your from your your response is that you don't recognize the ICGA as a legitimate governing body. Is that correct? Well, okay. I guess since you put it like that, I guess uh, if I were to participate in the procedure, it would have to have three properties. Number one, there would have to be some kind of a legitimate governing body. Number two, there would have to be some kind of incentive for me to, to participate. And number three, it would the investigation would have to be conducted in a fair, impartial manner. So, you know, those three properties all have to be met and, uh, and then I'm ready to go. So what you're saying then is that you do not believe that the ICGA conducted their investigation in a fair and proper manner? Yeah, I would say that's a fair statement. The ICGA alleged that you violated Rule 2 of their World Computer Chess Championship tournament. Um, involving program originality. What is your answer to that? No, I don't believe that I violated that rule. Now, uh, if you look at the rule, it is somewhat vague. For example, there's, some, there's a clause in there about how each program has to be the original work of the developer. So, you know, that term, original, that could be quite a wide term. You could apply that quite widely. You could make the argument that uh, you know, all kinds of uh, similarities between programs exclude them from being original. So, you know, you can of course argue almost anything, but I would say, let's say under reasonable definitions of these terms, then it's pretty clear that uh, Ripka is perfectly legitimate and uh, compliant entry in the tournament, yes. All right, so what you're saying then is that the word original is not something you can just go to the shelf, pull down the dictionary definition of the word original, there it is, and that applies black and white to your case. You're saying it's more of a, a, it's a more complex and contextual issue. Is that what you're saying? Sure. I mean, there is no, uh, the word original does not, from its definition, uh, you know, indicate the exact requirements for what, you know, uh, what uh, the program must look like. So, in other words, you're looking for something beyond a dictionary definition. You're looking for a technical definition of original. And, you, and you, you mentioned in your statement something to the effect that you're looking for some standard, you know, some defined standard beforehand that would measure the similarity of one engine's output to another. And that did not exist at the time of the tournaments and does not exist now. Is that right? Well, if I was running a tournament, I think, okay, for a tournament director, I think there's kind of two basic different uh, ways to go with this issue, okay? The first, and I think this is probably the most reasonable one, 
is basically to allow almost everything as long as there's not some kind of like blatant, obvious cloning uh, involved, okay? And those, the cases where there's something really blatantly obvious, those are usually discovered in five minutes. So that's, that's one possibility, and that's kind of what has been happening, actually, basically until now. The other thing you could do is you could come in and you could really set some strict requirements. You could say, listen, this is what's okay, this is what's okay, this is what is not okay. If you're going to do that, you have to have some kind of a procedure, which is applied automatically, to every single entrant. And this procedure has to be numerical. You know, for example, if you want to go by analogy to, let's say, drug testing in, uh, you know, in the Tour de France, you know, they have an exact drug test. You know, you have a, you know, you take the blood sample and certain chemical properties are analyzed and it's very, there's a very quantitative definition. And in fact, a lot of guys, you know, who use performance enhancing, enhancing drugs use them, but they don't use enough to go above the thresholds. And so, you know, the, the, but the point is the thresholds are clearly defined and they're applied to everybody. And so that's kind of the second way to do it. Now, in practice, I don't think that's going to work because I think any tournament that's going to enforce standards like that, the programmers just won't show up and it just won't really, it's just going to be too much, you know, it's, there's just not enough incentive to play these tournaments. But in theory, you could go down that path and if the tournaments had big prizes and you really had an impartial committee uh, of kind of, you know, neutral guys, then I think you could possibly uh, do that. All right, well, okay, in your opening statement, you also said that you had studied fruit and that you had taken ideas from fruit. I mean, you know, I think in that period of 2005, everyone was looking at fruit code, right? Because it was kind of a breakthrough. So, you know, was there anything in particular that you remember that you, you know, was, was particularly good about fruit that you thought was extremely helpful in your programming code? Oh, sure. By the way, it's not just ideas. So that's, uh, you know, there's not, it's not just a question of code versus ideas. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can take from a, let's say, program A can take from program B. You can take the flow of the code, the setup of the code. You can take even data structures. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different uh, ways that, uh, you, you know, you can benefit from the existing programs. So that's... Uh, you know, it's not just a matter of ideas. Uh, of course, ideas in computer chess are the most important because computer chess is about ELO. It's not, it's kind of a little bit unusual in that, you know, most software projects are about code quality, code, you know, the code itself, code structure, code layout. Computer chess is more about the algorithms. So that's, that's one thing about computer chess. But I wouldn't say, first of all, that it's just a matter of ideas. I mean, there's a lot more uh, that you can, uh, you can uh, take from a program and just ideas. Um, as far as specifically what, I mean, well, boy, I, that, that could be a long, uh, long discussion. Uh, I think one of the kind of nice things about Fruit is that it was very concise. Uh, a lot of programmers, and I'm definitely in this category, the more time we have to work, the bigger the code gets, the messier it gets. And so I would say that's kind of the number one thing. I mean, there's a lot of things, but that's, I would say, if I had to pick one thing, that would probably be it. All right. So would you like to publicly thank Fabian for making fruit? Oh, sure. I think I've done that a few times. All right. Well, I, maybe that's the first step of, you know, reconciliation. I'm hoping. Okay. Well, my problem isn't with Fabian. I mean, that's not, the, that's, he's not the problem. He's a very good programmer, and that's... <laughs> You don't think Fabian is the problem. He's the first one to lodge a complaint. What are you saying? Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Uh, so, Fabian, the programmer, is not the problem. <laughs> Fabian, the complainer, I guess, could be a problem. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you did. You can't be serious. Killing me! You didn't know what he wrote. You haven't read his complaint? For God's sake, Vaz! You're, oh, you're killing me, man. No, but okay, but here's the thing, though. I, okay, I'll give you another answer if you want. Um, you know, there's a lot of noise out there. I mean, a lot of you know people make accusations. Uh, the question is, what happens with those accusations? You know, who follows through? Who, you know, pretends to be some kind of an authority and, and a judge? So that's. I don't really have any problem with somebody accusing me of something. I mean, I consider that's kind of normal. So, Vaz, it sounds like you really haven't studied the ICJ's findings thoroughly enough to categorically refute every point 
Um, is that right? Would you would you say that's correct? Yeah, I guess I'm not uh, ready to do that right now. But you can ask me questions if you have some specific question about something. Uh, you know, feel free to ask. No, Vaz, I don't think today I'm gonna you know act as prosecutor and uh, and go point for point through all the allegations. It's it would make too long of an interview. Um, and you know this is something between you and them. I'm not gonna get in the middle of the particulars today. Uh, but I am interested, I mean, you know, they have made these allegations, they have done it in a way that you found objectionable. Um, this story has appeared in like 5,000 websites, it's appeared in the British tabloids, it's appeared in Der Spiegel. My question to you, if you're prepared to comment, is what do you intend to do about it? Well, I, I would say that uh, I have no comment about that. What would it take for you and the ICGA to be back in good graces again? Oh, I, I mean, I don't see that happening at this point. It, it, maybe the resignations by everybody there. Vaz, do I interpret your, <laughs> your answer uh, as a call for Dr. David Levy to resign? No, really not. I, I mean, I just don't care, you know, so you asked me the question, so not going to happen. No, Vaz. Either you, you can't say that. You just contradicted yourself. Either you would call for them to resign or you wouldn't. It's one or the other. No, but I mean, my answer really is I just don't care. Uh, they asked for all the trophies you won and all your prize money back. Uh, what do you intend to do about that? Yeah, I haven't really thought about it. I'm not even sure what exactly prize money means. As far as I know, there was no prize money. I just haven't thought about it. Do you think maybe Dr. Levy ought to send you some canceled checks uh, to prove that you made some prize money? Yeah, I seriously, I have no idea what that means. I mean, uh, so there was no prize money by my definition of the word prize money, so. Okay. The, uh, the ICGA says that uh, they repeatedly asked you to address their findings and you t more or less ignored them. Would you say that's true? Yeah. And my understanding is that the ICGA has referred this, uh, this matter to the uh, FSF, which is the organization that pursues uh, GPL violations. I mean, do you have a comment on that? No, no, I don't have any comment about things like that. All right. All right, well, okay, Vaz, then let's, you know, it looks like you, we've pretty much exhausted this topic. Um, I'm sure that others would, would think that we've only just scratched the surface, but this is, as far as I'm prepared to go with it, uh, you know, people can judge your answers uh, as they wish. So let's, let's kind of move on to some other topics. I mean, let's look, talk about the collateral damage that this may have caused. Uh, something that I'm very interested in personally is whether you are now in the doghouse with Iveta. <laughs> no, actually, we had some fun with this, I guess. <laughs> Not yet. Um, how about your relationship to Chess Base and Convecta? Is there any news there? Uh, yeah, that's not really something, you know, I can't speak for other people, so they would have to, uh, you know, you'd have to speak with them if you, if you want to find out what really they think. Uh, but as far as I know, everything's fine. Uh, I enjoy working with these companies. I feel like we have a good relationship and uh, we have some plans, you know, going forward. So that's, but you never know how, you know, how the future will turn out, of course. Have you talked to them since this thing broke? Well, those would be private discussions, so I'm not ready to talk about things like that. So have, have you, any of your chess projects or plans been affected by the ICGA's decisions? Well, my plans haven't changed. So uh, yeah, I have a nice little spike in sales this last week, and who knows what else will come along. Uh, but, you know, as far as like what I do every day, no, nothing's really different. I'm just uh, working, uh, trying to get ready for some upcoming things. You say you've had a spike in sales. That sure sounds like there's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, actually, you know, I, I usually take this point of view that I don't do marketing, I don't do hype, I just do product, I just do quality product, I try to concentrate on that. But 
this week I had, I had like four times as many sales as average for a week, you know, so it's like, kind of makes me think maybe I should try to get more stuff going like this, you know, somehow. So are you still going ahead with the Ripka cluster? Well, it's actually already been launched, so we um, gone through some twists and turns, but we do have, you can already rent the Ripka cluster, there is an announcement about it on our website. So Felix Kling made a website for us and so you can, if you want to rent a cluster, you can rent it from Lukash. Now the existing option ha is severely limited in a number of ways. I'm not sure I want to get into all that right now, but basically you can only rent it for continuous chunks and it's quite expensive. Uh, so we're working on making it more accessible. So you can rent it uh, with smaller chunks and for smaller segments of time. And, uh, you know, so we're working on that, and when that's ready to go, uh, then we'll have something to say, you know, we'll have, we'll have, it'll be something that's more, uh, that should have a much wider audience than uh, what we currently offer. But yeah, we're working on the cluster, I'm, of course, working on the engine, and Lukash is doing uh, all kinds of work on networking and, and just simply his setup. He's got a collection of hardware, and he's got all kinds of scripts for managing it, and so... Yeah, we're simply, um, you know, improving what we have. How many cores are you up to now? I believe it's something like 290 physical cores, so 580 uh, logical cores. Not sure what the exact number is actually, but that's, uh, I think that was it. All right, so Vaz, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the ranking lists for computer chess engines. You know, you dominated those lists for five years. Uh, last December, a program called Houdini came into the picture and uh, is now about 50 points ahead of you. Pretty much the undisputed strongest PC engine around. Do you have any comment on that? Well, I'm not going to comment on other engines, so... Okay. All right, you don't want to talk about specific engines, so let me try to ask you the same question but in more general terms without talking about specific engines okay just talking the big picture here you have Houdini ahead of you and you have three or four engines that are really knocking at the door and probably with one or one or two more releases will be ahead of you I mean those are Stockfish, Komodo, Critter and I, you know, I'm hearing rumors that there's an unreleased version of Thinker out there that is, you know, pretty much at the stockfish level. So if all four of these guys increased by maybe 30 ELO points, you could be down in sixth place. So without talking about the engines, how would you feel about being in sixth place? Well, ELO is important. ELO is one important aspect of an engine, so uh, that's that is something I pay attention to, and uh, I. Uh, do try to maintain high ELO in the, in the rating list with my release version uh, together with some other things. It's not the only thing that I focus on, but it is important, yes. And uh, so, you know, when Ripka 5 comes along, then uh, I'll have some, hopefully, some more to say about that. You know, Vaz, I was really kind of expecting and hoping that you would, you know, come at me with an answer more like Arnold Schwarzenegger and you'd say, I'll be back. I mean, why, why, why aren't you telling us, you know, absolutely you'll be back at the top of the list? Well, you know, uh, I have a number of goals, you know, a number of kind of, let's say, computer chess sub-projects, and, uh, you know, I have to make these kind of decisions, and then sometimes opportunities come along that are too good to pass up. So I can't, you know, one of the things is, so I'm a one-person company, I, uh, and that has, of course, some drawbacks, but it has one really great advantage which means I can be very flexible to take advantage of opportunities. And so that's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make any promises about what's going to happen, what I'm going to do, because everything is pretty much liable to change at any, any point. So, of course, I have a plan. Right now, I have a plan. Um, but it can change. And so that's why I can't say what's going to happen with Ripka 5 or with, you know, any other things that I'm planning right now. So you're not even going to give us a, a clue on when Ripka 5 might be released? Well, I can do that, okay? So, again, this is a disclaimer now. Uh, this is just a plan right now. It can change at any moment. But uh, most likely, we'll have Ripka 5 at the end of this year. That's kind of, let's say, I would say that's the most likely outcome. And the second most likely would be early next year, kind of, let's say, in the spring. 
And, you know, regardless of specifically how strong that is or what kind of features there are, you know, it'll be a good release. If I'm going to release a public engine, uh, it's going to get a certain amount of effort from me, a certain amount of quality, and so uh, you can be sure that it's going to be something worth having. Are you planning on participating in any tournaments in the foreseeable future? Well, I'm hoping that freestyle will finally get rolling again. You know, it's been kind of a little bit, you know, we had those PAL freestyle tournaments, let's say, until about two years ago, and we've had kind of very little since then. We had this Mundial Chess, which was quite interesting, but it seems to have been a one-off event. And uh, so now there's uh, a number of things that I think are actually somewhat likely to kick into gear, but so I'm really kind of keeping my fingers crossed. I think that would be really great if we could have some freestyle again. Yeah, obviously, I, you know, I would be interested in that myself. Um, you know, my team will be there if there is such a tournament, and I'm sure yours will be, and we might even face each other head to head. That would certainly be interesting. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, you know, bring back some old memories, I guess. <laughs> well, I was looking at the totality of the thing, looking at the fact that you've been called a cheater and much more in thousands of websites and even the New York Times and Der Spiegel you seem like you're in pretty good spirits well you know actually when I first started getting like accused of all these horrible things at first you know I wanted to kind of like fight against it and I would really try to you know argue and but at some point I guess I just kind of got used to it it's like at this point it's almost like chatting about the weather or something so, yeah, it, it doesn't really uh, register anymore, I guess. All right, Vaz, thank you very much for granting me this exclusive interview. It's been a real pleasure to meet with you again, and some newsworthy stuff this time. Yes, it was great to talk to you. It was really fun. Uh, so, thank you. All right, folks, so long. <laughs>